guys welcome to comfy cozy up so yeah we're in september now so it's time to talk about the books that i've read in august now august was an interesting month i started with a lot of heavy books heavy topic um i also read four book books off the book along list and the, the subscriber pick and then i decided i wanted to just be in romance land so i was in romance land for maybe two weeks i love the books so we're going to talk about those as well but let's talk about the physical books that i've read and how i felt after reading them so i read this is kai miller things that i have withheld and this is essays that he's written that are absolutely fascinating this is a five star book this is a book that really resonated with me as someone who is from the caribbean and the way he talks about his experience, things that he never said and why he's never said certain things or how he felt in expressing himself. And it's just, it, it makes me think of a lot of different things. It's, it's experience living abroad. It's experience traveling the world, in the, being on the continent in Africa, and also different Caribbean islands that you just grab every word he's saying and they make you stop and think. And I was just turning these pages. This is one of those kind of nonfiction that I will pick up again and read because there's certain stories I want to read again that I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, he was he went there with it. He did that. Or I'm cheering, or I'm clapping, or I'm like feel a certain kind of sadness because I can understand that kind of um, reflection and things that he's talking about. Absolutely love this. If you haven't read Camille. You know I love his fiction. His fictions are just phenomenal. But I would have to say he also knows how to pen nonfiction where you can enjoy the pages and really grasp and learn something and um, absorb his words. And you want that in a nonfiction because I do not read a lot of nonfiction because oftentimes I get bored. Not, not, not this. <laughs> not this. So, highly recommend. Then I started... Um, the Booker. Now, I've read up to four this month, but I read one previously that made it on the long list. So I've had um, up to five Booker. And this book is a debut, and if I survive you, it is also a Caribbean author, Jamaican heritage. And so I was very much interested in this prior to it getting on the list. So I um, would say this is another one where I was like, oh, yeah. I, I yes I get it yes I get it, um, but it it's a story that really talks about um, immigration and your identity. You there's I talked about how sometimes when you leave one country to another, your then your identity change. It reflects on what is important and what is considered your um, val what's valuable as far as your identity in a different person's um, country and their culture. And then you, you see that in this, you have uh, this family where you have uh, two kids and a mother and father leaving Jamaica during, um, in the middle of uh, political unrest and it was, you know, violence and people wanted to get out. They came now to another country, being America, and it focused mostly on the son. Now the son, one of the son, now one of the son never felt like he was the chosen one in terms of between him and his brother, so there's that comp competition. There's that certain things that is happening between him and his father of not uh, feeling special, feeling wanted. And he struggles with so many things about him that throughout the story, you don't know why he's doing this. You're kind of scratching your head. But at the same time, there's that deeper message that you're getting as you turn the page. I absolutely love the ending. It was one of those endings that I felt, oh yeah, he's going to heal. It was like he's gonna heal. I love this for how creative it comes off. It does come off like like interlock stories, um, how it's written, which I always find interesting in um, Caribbean stories when it's written like that. Um, so, but it, it still gives you uh, bits and pieces of a culture of um, someone um, struggling to to define who they are, and but still has that. Um, solution. It wasn't over the top like a lot of books that has this kind of theme. I thought it was just well balanced and I, I, I enjoy this. The next book is a book that made me quite angry. Uh, the other, This other Eden and let me tell you 
Paul Hardy, I think, I want to say I read something else by him, but I can't remember because um, it's been a while. I just can't remember. I was looking at all the books that, anyway. This book, because it was inspired by a true story, it made me angry. It made me just another part of history that I was unaware of, another ugly side of history. Um, where you have uh, uh, a community that is not the norm from that time period. This is very much historical fiction that so goes way back. And it is influenced by um, an island in Maine where um, these people who decided to live their, their interracial relationships, they're not living as what you would call how the people on the mainland is living. And someone thought that there was their job to go and remove these people from said land for gain. It's always for gain. It's always for something that is not, you know, good or necessary benefit anybody but themselves. Um, but it's it's how is the story is written. There is some negativity that I didn't like. I didn't like what what happened to one of the characters. Like I felt like it wasn't necessary. But there's other parts of this that made me want to go look up the real deal. I like that it was things were added to give it a more realistic take of what potentially may have happened. Um, and that made the story more interesting. It is short, it's not long, but at the same time it does have that, um, that deep sour taste in my mouth. That's the best way I can put it. I still, I still think of this book and I'm like... <sighs> The more you know about history, the more you realize how much people' intentions were so wrong and so hurtful and really destroy people's community, people's culture, people's lives. And, you know, it's just, yeah. So, this is interesting. But it's very booker. Very booker. So, we're going to take a break from the booker for a little. Let's jump in to the pick for the subscriber pick. So, I've enjoyed all these subscriber picks. They are so different. These are books I would have never picked up. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, y'all yeah, really do know me. Because the story, the story, the subscriber knew I would enjoy this. But not the cover. Now, you know I had to make a cover for this. Because this cover was just unbelievably garbage. This is is advertised as dark romance. But I don't quite think it is a dark romance. I think this is this can fall under urban fiction because it's more of a crime mystery that is involved in this. So but it started off with a bang. The the first chapter will have you scratching your head because here goes a woman on a date with this man that was just trash pretty much. And as she storm out of the date, um this man is following her because he's intrigued but it just turned out it's a good thing he followed her because she was she got kidnapped because she was wasn't thinking it was that one of those emotional moments where she stormed out she wasn't thinking she wasn't even looking at her surrounding real life you a woman maybe you shouldn't be in this area and she got kidnapped things happen protection p people died and then now you are obligated to the person who saved your life to the point that you gotta marry the man. <laughs> yes, it is wild, but, but, let me tell you, you would not want to put this book down because you just want to know where is this madness going to and what are we doing. But when you really learn about the man who protected her and his backstory and his mission and how he is, what he's doing as far as the media, he is well known. Um, but they they call I forgot it was like the silent something I can't remember exactly what they call him, but then he's just one of those guys that is out for justice. Anybody that's wrongfully accused because he experienced that. I'm sorry guys, these lights and me doing this maybe not a good thing. <laughs> I'm coughing. So anyway, um, so then you get into this crime mystery where someone else is going to be got themselves in the same shoes as what this main character has experienced and he has to try to to save that person so it became that who done did it kind of crime mystery and I love that part of the story than the romance I think the romance was just it was there it was alright but I was here for solving the crime I want to know who done did it 
which I enjoy how it panned out and it makes me want to know when, when the part 2 coming out because it is supposed to be a series. I'm ready, but for one thing I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've never heard of this author before. I'm definitely going to pick up her other series. She has a historical fiction series and you know I love my historical fiction, so I'm going to pick up that. Then we have Old God's Time. Sebastian Barry. Lord Jesus. Um, this is one of those books where it was in the middle for me. Um, it was okay. I, I didn't I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. It's just like a one of the middle role, like a three star kind of role. Um, so this is a story that really follows a retired police officer. Now he is retired. He's on the grid in um off of um Ireland, and he now is pulled back into a cold case, an old case that he has involvement in. So you're going to learn about that in the story. But you are following now haunted memories that's coming back to this man. So now you learn about his wife, his children, and the things that happened to him, his childhood, his wife's childhood, the relationships of where um, children who has been, um, has experienced some form of abuse. Um, pertaining to also the church. So there's a lot of things that's happening in this that's very haunted where you are in reality but then sometimes you're not sure if it's reality or we are, you know, back in memory lane kind of deal. I like the creepy part of this story. Um, I thought it was interesting a few times where he turned around and he's like not sure, you're not sure where is it going. But, um, sorry. You're not sure where it's going, but I thought this was interesting in some aspect. But then there's some aspect of it where I was just like, okay, it, it wasn't giving me enough. Something about it that was just not enough. Then we have Western Lane. And this one is short, but it's not too sweet. This is one of those where I definitely needed more. This follows a family of a mother, they're grieving their mother, the mother. These are three young girls and their father and sport becomes a thing that the father is pushing on them. Then you have the, one of the main characters, she is very much, she's brilliant, she's, um, she can play very well. Then you had a middle auntie who is like, one, it's, it's one part wants a piece of her sister that she lost but another part of her is wanting a child because she cannot have a child. So that happened in this. There's a lot of things in this that is just like irk my nerve that I had, I was annoyed. Um, and then I, you know, it just gave me the whole like of, of using girls in a way that not giving them a voice. But I can understand it's a cultural thing in this book. Um, but the ending to me, I love open ending and certain things, but to me the ending didn't give me enough. I felt like I was, I wanted something more, a little bit more writing t because it just felt like very unfinished, like very unfinished. Like I was just like, no, I need a little bit more. So that's where, how I felt about this. It wasn't short and sweet. It, it was just, it, it lacked a little something. Um, but I do like the sport aspect, badminton, I haven't played that in so long. So I like the fact that that was mentioned in this and how it was, you know, she was like really good. But how sometimes women weren't even in that sport, it wasn't even like a thing for them. It just focused more on the boys. So even when she went to play, there was not enough people, not enough girls that was in the competition. So it was, a, it was one of those, again, as a woman, it was just one of those stories where I was just like... Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to some romance. Now this is the month when I realize um I'm gonna read a lot of Alexander Warren. She's gonna pop up a lot, a lot on this channel because I'm realizing I like her writing style, I like her story. I love that most of her books are short and sweet and leave you with a smile on your face. It has erotic content, but it was just creative as hell. I love If for if Only for the Summer, was which is um, Nova and Guy, and this is a teacher, and they're both teachers, you know, and but it focuses more on Nova in terms of her being a teacher. Like, sometimes you forget that the main guy is a, is a teacher, but he was an art teacher. 
he has a three-year-old son and she is single she's not single what am i saying she's in a relationship with a man who basically forget that he's in a relationship but he's in the spotlight so he's always traveling to other location and um in california and all that and then she's like having to just deal with it so her both of them are best friend to different well the guy's best friend with the husband of the girl's best friend that kind of deal but you wonder how they never really know each other if they're best friends to these people but you get that in the story why they weren't i love how the interaction between the three of them like as in nova guy and the little boy i just love the interaction that they have i thought it was so sweet it made the book so enjoyable and it gave you a built up it wasn't one of those one two three and they were like you know having a sexual relationship it was more like they were, you know, making fun of each other, how they were communicating. Just, it just, it made sense when it happened that you just was like root for them. Like, yeah, get it. I love it. I love the ending. It was just one of those really perfect summer book. It is some, the, the, the title is so fitting for this. It was just so perfect. I, I cannot, I have no qualms with this. Nothing that I could say that I didn't like about this. It was just good. Then I fell into Baggage Claim. And Baggage Claim also was an, an, a one I thought was creative as a romance. It, it is short, it's not that long, but it was creative of how she told this story where you are thinking like a normal person would think as you read in this story. But then she gets you at the end with the haha where you're like, oh thank God that's what it was. Because it was one of those this is this is this is way over the top kind of situation. But it makes sense. I love that. This was creative. Um this is a um a guy and a girl. The girl um basically her boyfriend break up with her at um this like she thought he was going to propose in front of people and internally he just break up with her. She escaped like she just want to go and she decided to go to the hotel, um, sorry, the um, airport and she was going to somewhere. She's end up going to Houston. No plans, no baggage. She has literally just her handbag and her whatever she had on. And then she met this guy who was like intrigued by her. He was, you know, looking at her, but it was more like, they were like, back, you know, he, he was like making certain comments to her that... And she was just so bold because she was hurt that she didn't care. And when you think of the things you're doing, you're like, oh, which crazy person. Like, really? Like, that that's just crazy to me. Like, I was like, what person in the right mind would do something like that? No, she's just crazy. That's all I was thinking. But as you, you know, read this, you're like, yeah. She did good. She did good on that one. Then we have um, Archie. And Noelle. So now I went back to Penelope Ward. It's been a while since I've read anything from her. So I was excited for this. And this is another summer one where they're at a beach house that their um, parents um, um, co-own. Like um, Their fathers are lawyer. One was a mentor for the other. So they have this business where they you know, came together and bought this property. So it's very much summer theme and you have these, um, they're young, they're starting, one is almost finishing college, another one's starting college and that chemistry that happened through that summer. Loved it, it was just so sweet but then tragedy hit them and their life just kind of went separate ways. So for 12 years, 12 years they couldn't get it together. They were having separate lives and family and for 12 years they couldn't get it together knowing that they needed each other and they wanted to be with each other. That part can be frustrating when you read a book like this but because I'm used to the author's writing style it was okay. She also do a lot of flashback where you're going back from 12 years to now kind of deal. So if you're not into that that might be a challenge for, for some people who just don't like that kind of flashback. But again I've read probably 10 or more books from this author so I'm very much familiar with how she likes to write these kind of flashback stories. Then we have a series that I started and I'm telling you this series I am going to continue the series slowly I'm glad they're all already out so it's three books in the series I already have them all downloaded and this is Mercy and it's Love Belvin. Now I've read something from her before but you know this was like been a while. And this one I like, this man went to jail for 10 years, but, but not for nothing. 
there's 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 certain things that happen while he sacrificed 10 years of his life and so of course he comes out he's like working the regular job doing all of this and he met this girl whose father owns a um is into construction realtor property all kind of things like that which is not her first love she wants to dance but her father's like you just you're going to take over the family business that kind of deal they cross paths. She finds him attractive, but at the same time, he's one of those guys that he's on a he has a goal, he has a plan, he's on a mission, and he's not trying to do anything else. But she's a distraction. But it's a distraction that you can, as a reader, you like the distraction that she's given him. And then, of ultimately, this is a slow burn, guys. It's a slow burn. It is no hot steaming nothing until <laughs> damn near the end of the book. But as what I love about this is like when she's such a caring person for him because she knows his story. He's like openly tell her, yeah, I went to jail. I did all this. And he's like, you know, took her out. And she's concerned about how much money he's spending, like every penny. Because she f kind of feel like, oh, no, you can't afford this. You're starting over. I got this. Um, literally, she know. No, no babes. <laughs> this is this man ain't you don't know who he really is. That kind of bad. But I liked it because it was just like a such a your chemistry between them was so sweet. And I am here for Jazz. I wanna know more about him. I do, I do, I do, I do. I sure do. So I went back to Alexander um Warren. I can't help it. I, I can't help it. I can't help it because she just do to me. So I read, oops. Now, first I was like, do I even want to read this? Because just the whole idea of um, uh, two people being irresponsible and getting pregnant. But then I said, I've been liking her books. Let me just try it anyway. And this one is Cammy and Maverick. Let me tell you. I was just like, okay. This is actually cute. This is basically one of those stories where they don't get along, but they everybody think they will be good for each other that kind of storyline um but it was one of those he is like his mother's famous but he's like a socialite they pay money to appear in different places so he's always in a tabloid they always have something to say about it here comes she now working for his mother um nun um foundation and um she was just you know sucked in by his generosity and gave up the cookies <laughs> and then oops Without thinking, got pregnant. Now they got to figure out how they're going to do this. But he's all like, ah, oh, I got her kind of deal. And she's like, oh, I don't know about this. So I like that. I like the chemistry. I, like the, I just thought it was so cute. And it's a quick read. And I was just here for it. It was sweet. I like them um, together. I like how they've tried to figure out this baby thing. And, you know, and what kind of relationship they're going to have. That kind of deal. Um, then I read the novella, which is the last one, and this is based on Maverick's sister. So if you read the first one, there's a scene in there that happened, and this is like giving you more detail on how it happened and why it happened kind of deal. And I love, I love this, how she's like a businesswoman, but they, she went on a date. It was a date that ended with more than just a date, but it was just like, oh yeah, I'm, I was here for this too. It was short, but it was sweet, and it just gave me like, um, I, I was smiling reading this one as well. Um, so overall, I think I'm definitely going to read some more Alexander um, Warren. I keep wanting to say House because I'm so lo I love Alexander House, but this is Warren. <laughs> um, but I think it's she's just a, I just like her writing style um, and. I like how much her, her storylines are very easy to get into where you you see the, the idea of the story and you're not like frustrated by by author who's drag because her books are not long at all and you know some people just don't want this everlast long everlasting romance novel they want a romance novel that's going to be short to the point but still has some form of character development still find that you have actual storyline not just this smut smut going on so yeah, so, and I read one more today, but you know, it's in September, so that's going to be on September, and that one's interesting too. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be into reading more of her books. She has a lot. So that is it, guys. That is it. I'm happy with the books I read. I do, am, well, I am going to get back into the booker because I have three more. I have two of the big ones and another one, so I have about three, and 
keep pushing until I get to the end. Um, hopefully I finish before the long the shortlist comes out. I think shortlist comes out the 20 something of this month. But we'll see how that works. I might finish it before the shortlist. I, I don't know because the two of them are beasts. They, they're kind of chunky. Um, and so we'll see how that works. So I will fill you out on this. Let me know what is your favorite book that you read for um, this for um, August. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.